And the COVID-19 pandemic has hit hard on the global economy with world powers like the United States recording 3.84 million weekly jobless claims, topping 30 million over the last six weeks. Now Nigeria, with a population of over 200 million, had in 2019 recorded 98 million poor citizens in 10 years. In the same breath, unemployment figures hover between 23 to 25%. But these figures would likely rise post-COVID, as institutions and businesses have either resolved to downsizing the staff strength. During the week, a financial institution gave hints of a possible downsizing. Let's take a look uh, to discover further is uh, Gospel Obele, who is an economist. Good morning, Gospel. Hi, good morning. Thank to... you for having me. Right. Uh, what, what is the faith of staffers who would have to be laid off at this time? Uh, well, it's quite unfortunate. Um, but then it's left to the staffers themselves to review uh, and find opportunities elsewhere. Apparently, um, in a crisis period, we have situations of both opportunities and then uh, um, closed doors, per se. So staffers who lose their jobs will need to find opportunities elsewhere in other sectors that would likely thrive on post-COVID and find skills that are relevant in those sectors, especially detail-related skills, um, to take off on their career. On the, on, on, on the other option, uh, probably entrepreneurship would also be another route, but then that's not primarily designed for everyone. But right. basically, uh, staffers will need to find opportunities in other sectors that will thrive on post-COVID. Right. Now, should we be worried, you know, when even the financial institutions begin to downsize in this magnitude? Yes, of course, we should be. Uh, we are now in a stage in, our glo in globalization where uh, major issues around global health can also impact economic fundamentals or key economic indicators like unemployment. And what that means is that the world has hit, recession has hit earlier than earlier in quotes than we assumed or expected it to be. Although um, um, technically we will say that um, it's, a, it's um, after two uh, quarters of negative growth per se. But when you already have a, a, a sign of high unemployment numbers of, of staff being laid off, and then you have slow growth in an economy, you don't necessarily have to wait for two quarters to begin to take off on recovery measures. So this nature of downsizing and the like is a sign that um, a recession has hit quite early, and we need to start thinking on how we can recover both as, both as individuals and as a nation. So it's a bad sign for the financial sector because it, naturally, it means that as much as banks are trying, trying to take over, people's jobs are now at risk. Um, and then on post-COVID, in as much as we expect that volumes of transaction will increase, uh, we also know that there may be a delay or some lag in one form or the other because there is also a drag in the nature and the volume of business activities in the country. All right, uh, Obele, let's put it in perspective a bit more. Now, could this also be as a result of the merger between Diamond and Access Bank for which COVID-19 has now further put pressure on staff retention? All right. Um, first of all, COVID-19 amplified or just revealed, you know, the organizational excesses and management failures of so many institutions in Nigeria. And then um, um, this hard and fast way of engaging human resource management practices. So the work from home order revealed that you don't need as much as you think you do. And um, organizational structure can be way more efficient and lean. And we can get more results in, in terms of that. But um, taking a cue and hand sight on these, and last year we did a research on, on the Access Diamond merger, we realized that we were even core cultural and human resource issues in the bank from the merger. So what you have now are just um, issues that are playing out and in the form of management excesses, you know, in different pockets and all that. COVID-19 only amplified the issue and revealed the, um, the urgency, you know, and the need to take action because if the bank doesn't take action now, they will run into uh, uh, serious issues in the short term. Mm -hmm. So it was just wise to take action early enough, but that could have been done, you know, ma by managing and, and engage the meta process properly, knowing that cultural and human um, capital related issues were misaligned. Yeah. Right. Now, still on uh, seeking alternative measures, in your opinion, what is the future of work and, more importantly, the need to diversify rather one's earnings at this time? So um, the future of work is um, tending towards more digital. And um, in the short to medium term, a few sectors 
would uh, be way more, way more intensive than others and uh, beyond what we used to think, you know. So this idea of low labor intensiveness has come to, uh, it has become threatened with the, with the whole COVID-19 emergence and all of that. So digital, first of all, people will need to start thinking of how can I do what I'm doing in a way that I can employ or deploy digital tools and work smarter. Secondly, organizations will go lean. Organizations will have to go lean because they need to cut costs. And they need to cut costs because business would not be coming in as usual and probably even have to work their business models to attend to different markets or to keep being in business themselves, plus the need for them to go in. So um, workforce is going to be very challenged. Unemployment numbers will go high, but the smart individuals will have to think of opportunities elsewhere. And there are thriving sectors, like I mentioned earlier on, on post-COVID, that will be taking labor en masse, all right? And labor skills will be required in, in, in this sector. So individuals will have to think about what skills plus digital advantage can I um, 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 bring together and take advantage of post-COVID era otherwise? And then the government has to um, need to have a labor recovery plan, more or less. You know, so we need to move from just talking the need for job creation to actually creating job, these jobs and unlocking sector with great potentials. You know, so a cluster of all of these dynamics would really shape the future of work. Uh, but then individuals and workforce have to independently think of how to thrive in the new economy. All right, do you also see a domino effect as other banks may decide to follow suit? Oh, surely, surely. Other banks will follow suit. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. And then it's going to happen in series gradually. Not just banks now. Majority of decisions will have to follow suit because um, on post, um, the, or with the lift of the lockdown now, one of the announcements is organizations can only retain physically 60% of their staff. So the question is, what would happen to the 40 percent? And, and, and then and how about those who um, we've realized from digital engagement that we don't need as much people as we think or we've been wasting money. So a lot of companies will have to downsize. There's no way around it. You know, being that reality and being the fact that the business, the business environment is on a serious slowdown right now. And the world is on a global recession, not just Nigeria. But for a country like Nigeria who is on the vulnerable end, it simply means that the drag will last longer and the business slowdown will last longer. So companies will have to cut costs by reducing and laying off staff. So it's a widespread engagement outside just the banking sector. Uh, but then it's quite obvious that a lot of man uh, bad management decisions have been made in time past. COVID-19 only amplified and revealed that. All right. Economist uh, Gospel Obele, thank you for your thoughts this morning and stay safe. Thank you for having me.